Psalm 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Come on, let's stand and worship. We've come to sing to Jesus this morning. Sing this with me. When I'm in the roughest waters, I won't go under, I won't drown. And when I'm in over my head, I know that you won't let me down. And when I'm Sing it out, say. Of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. Hey. I am a child of God. Can we just lift that up, say? Say, I'm no longer
sing it with me, say it. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Yeah, that's it. Your love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Your blood, say it. Your blood flows through my veins. Hey, cause I'm no Sing this with me again. Long a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Sing, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Come on, lift up a shout of praise.
Thank you, Lord, for meeting us here this morning. You are welcome into this place. Wherever you are is holy ground. We say you are welcome here.
Thank you, Lord. Father, this is either real or it's not. Your presence is either here or it's not. And God, our hearts are strangely warmed by your nearness and by your presence, God. And Lord, we need you to come and in intervene into our life, Lord. Chains to fall, fear to fall. And Lord, we open up our hearts here and there's, there's not a life in here that you are not fully aware of, not a thought that's been thought this morning that you aren't already aware of. And right now, we just come before you, God, to say, Lord, we're, we're broken. We're in need, Lord God. Father, we are in need. Right now, wherever you're at, we are sincerely in the presence of holy God. And he's brought all of us here. And he knows what you're going through. He knows what's happening in your life. And I just want you right now, while we're in this time of just this holy moment, would you just offer to God what's, what's happening in, in your life? I believe there's folks in this room that would say, God, I'm broken. I don't even know how to explain what's broken in me. Lord, my soul is broken. Lord, my thoughts are confused. Lord, can you bring clarity of thought? Lord, to a mind that says, I, I'm just confused. Lord, to broken bodies right now, men and women dealing with physical sickness, thank you that in your presence, your holiness, your power can touch and change that, Lord God. Father, I thank you, God, for, again, Lord, just fatigue. Men and women here that just say, Lord, I am tired. My faith is tired. I am fatigued in spirit. I need you to do something I can't do for myself. I'll tell you right now, if you have a need, right where you're at, would you just lift your hand to God to say, God, don't pass me. God, you know, physical need. There's something going on, just brokenness of your soul, heartbreak anger you don't know what to do with. You're, you're saying, I need you, God. I need you, God. Would you touch me? Would you help me? Father, you see all of the hands that are lifted right now. And I thank you, God, that you begin to move in us and around us. God, I have needs. Father, you know my needs. This pastor, Lord, I have need of you. And we in this room, God, we need you in this holy moment. Lord, as we just sang, show us your glory, your glory being manifest. Let minds actually change. Let hearts actually be healed. Lord, let downtrodden, let discouragement be lifted. God, with the crazy news and all the fear that's ginned up in our world right now, Father, I ask for peace, Lord, men and women that would say, I need peace in my soul. I thank you, Lord God. Every hand that's lifted right now, I pray you would touch, heal, lift, deliver, free, encourage, whatever the need is, Lord. Whatever the need is, Lord, in your holy presence. And Lord, thank you that you care. You said, cast your care on me. I care. I care. Lord, for the heart that has gotten so frozen to say, I don't think you do. I don't think you love, and I don't think you care. Lord, I ask, Lord, would you soften every one of our hearts so that we can receive what you've brought us here to receive. And Lord, we offer these things up and anticipate change in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a great, great hand there. Man, what a good-looking group. Well, I tell you what, we're going to just move right on in. We're not going to really lose this moment now. God's presence is here. He's always here. Uh, it's not so much him being here. It's our hearts just being aware. And that's the beauty of worship is something starts to strangely warm, and we get very aware. Wait a minute, God, you're here, and hope and faith starts to rise. So let's just keep that ginned up. Turn to two or three or four people. Give them a high five or $100, and you can be seated. Your choice. Ah, good deal. Hey, well, good morning, everybody. Great to see all of y'all. You just missed your opportunity to say, well, good morning back, but that's all right. 
Uh, it's too late. It doesn't feel genuine. If I have to ask for it. No, good morning to you all. It's great to, great to see all of you. Great to have all of you. I want to make sure you're all aware. This Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, we're going to come up. We're calling them Revival Nights. And I know when I say revival, everybody gets a different picture. This is only the second time in 25 years we've done this. But I just feel like before we uh, enter into August, uh, you know, how many of you took a shower this morning? <laughs> be honest with you. If not, you can point at the person. The, they, we know. You know, it, no matter how holy we are or how we're doing in our life, sometimes we just need to come and stop. Just get still and say, God, clean me up again. Fill me back up. And you're going to hear this morning in the message. This Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night, we're calling them revival nights, but we're not having a special speaker come in. We don't have a special band, our, our worship band. We're going to come and open the doors at 6 o'clock. And at 6, uh, I'm going to ask that you come ready to pray from 6 to 7. And if you pace and pray, you pace. If you kneel and pray, you kneel. If you bow, you bow. If you come and lay down up here, really there will be no direction given you come and pray. I would ask that if you're coming at six and, and you just kind of want to shoot the breeze, uh, I'm good with that. Just do that out there. When you cross those doors, this is holy ground. And you know what could happen. I mean, our insurance doesn't cover acts of God. So, uh, now in all seriousness, don't go suing the church. I told you. Uh, no, but this really is a holy, a holy time, and we just want to just come and seek God. How many of you understand, just looking at the craziness going on in our world, the craziness going on inside of us, we need, we sang the song, Show Us Your Glory. Good church is great, but good church isn't doing it. Um, we need our God to make a contact with us. And we're coming in faith to say, God, no special speakers. We're going to pray from 6 to 7. We'll worship for a while. And I'll just be listening for anything that the Holy Spirit may want to say. This is what we're emphasizing tonight. And we'll have a time for you just to come and just present that. We'll certainly have people here to pray for you and pray with you. But uh, this, is, this is you and God making contact, all right? And uh, anyway, so you all come for that and be, be prepared for that. We've been in a series called Get Ready. Everybody say Get Ready. Get Ready. And the issue is, you know, so we're going into September, we're going into uh, from here all the way through December. Uh, given the way things have gone the last two years, I don't know what we're getting ready for. I mean, who knows what's happening on the news next? But I do know this, the one who knows, knows how to get us ready. And so that's what this series has been about, and that's, that's why we're having these nights where we're just going to come and wait and worship and just get healed, just get some refreshing, get some fuel in the tank for whatever's coming next. You guys can turn to Revelation chapter 22. Uh, we're going to talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb. How many of you have ever heard of the marriage supper of the Lamb? In Revelation chapter 22, it's Jesus basically wrapping up all he wants to say to you and me. I mean, 22 is the last chapter in the book. We're done. And Jesus is saying, look, this is my last thoughts to you. And he's, he's pointing at a, a culmination of all things, the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is when the church, everybody who's a believer, and Jesus actually quit guessing at what he's going to look like, quit hoping only, uh, praying and being disappointed, standing in faith and then standing some more, which is what we're called to do. But all of that will come to an end as we actually see him and the covenant that we're believing by faith but can't see with these eyes, the love that we believe and sometimes experience, we don't have to guess at it anymore. We'll actually experience it. All of that comes together at the marriage supper of the Lamb. In other words, no more guessing. We're here, game over, in or out, but hallelujah, we're going to be in, all right? Marriage supper of the Lamb. And uh, in Revelation 22, this will be verse 14, Read a little of this. It says, blessed are those who wash their robes through salvation, having received Jesus and his blood. Blessed are you. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the gates are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to lie. 
love to live a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you the message for the churches. Now take that in, inhale that a little bit. I'm sending to the church. In other words, Pastor Randy, I'm giving you this letter to read to the, the crossing church, August 21 and 22. I want you to know this. Okay. I am both the source of David and the heir of his throne. I am the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Everybody say, come. Let anyone who hears this say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the waters of life. Now, I'm here. Uh, I, you, you may or may not have noticed, but there's a lot of talk about the last days. If you turn on any channel or any church, there's a lot of talk about, you know, pastor, uh, you know, Jesus is coming soon. We, we got to get ready. I had a great conversation with a young man. You may be here uh, with us. Last week, had a conversation and uh, had a great question. He said, look, I'm, I'm going to college. I want to get married. I want to go to college. I want to get my degree in this and this. But if Jesus is coming, there's no reason for me to do that. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, you know, uh, he, he, he said, why would I do that? I said, because we don't know that Jesus is coming. We don't know. I mean, uh, we've some of the most brilliant minds ever to study theology have looked at eschatology, that is the study of the scripture as to how things are going to roll out and when does this season end? When does the chapter of humanity, as we know, when does that end? And back in the 70s, uh, it, was, it, was, it was really fired up. I, I grew up and got saved in the 70s. I know you're thinking, he doesn't look that old. And I, I know. And, and I don't feel that old, but no, it's true. But, uh, and there was a good reason to for Jesus to come in the 70s. If you saw the uh, outfits, those leisure suits, it's like, <laughs> my God, get us out of here. Uh, but there was, there was quite the fervor, and a lot of the songs were being sung, and uh, terrible songs, sad songs. Uh, the this, this scripture here says that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit and the bride, who's the bride? The church, the Spirit and the bride, what we're to do is to come together and come into sync so that we're saying the same thing. Come, come, Lord Jesus. And uh, at that time, we were all saying, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come, singing these really sad songs. Uh, how many of you were at church in the 70s? Enough of you saying, uh, this, song, this lyric said, children die, the days grew old, and a piece of bread could buy a bag of gold. I wish we'd all been ready. Two men walking up a hill, one disappeared, and one's left standing still. I wish we'd all been ready. And that was the kind of worship song where if they were singing it, you were going. <laughs> Children die. Anyway, there was, there, was, there was fervor, and there was good reason. A guy wrote a book, 88 Reasons. How can you, I mean, if you've got 88 reasons why Jesus is coming in 1988, that's a lot of reasons. You know, he had to republish the next year, 89 reasons why Jesus is coming. He's, uh, he's up to, he had to dial it back down. Now he's at 22. That's easier. The deal is this. There's lots, of, there's lots of fervor about the return of Jesus, and that's okay. That's not a bad thing. I'm not, I don't know. I do know this. I don't know if we're living in the last days as we know it, but we are living in your last days. This is all the days you have. I mean, I, I, I'll turn 60 in October, and um, I got to tell you, it's gone by fast. We drive by these football fields and see these kids out there playing. I remember old Montre right there. Uh, it's one of my sons. You just think, man, y'all don't look alike. I know. <laughs> but a Montre would come over to the house back. Uh, seriously, when these guys were playing football, man, it just seems like that was yesterday. Now my kids are having children. How did that happen? And it's clicking by fast. And the days that I'll give an account for and the days that you'll give an account for, you're in your last ones. Because all you got is what you got left. And so we're to live, to, to that young man's question, and it's a great question. I totally get it. We're, we're to live our lives with some anticipation Jesus could come. But we're to, we're to plan our lives like, no, you're going to ride this thing out. You know, you're going to you know, get your retirement ready, go to college, get married, Go on with your life, live it for God, come to church. 
Be, be where you can hear among believers uh, because Jesus, he told us, you're not gonna know. Here's what you need to focus on. Get filled with the Spirit so that you can win the lost. Okay, that's what I want. I want to make you my witnesses. So you guys go get in the upper room. Just be busy doing that when I do come back. That'd be a good plan. So right here we see that this, this marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, marriage supper, so that means the church is the bride and Jesus is the groom. So let's clear up something that's bothering me already. How, how many guys in here have a little issue with that? I don't wear a dress. I, I've seen say yes to the dress, and I try to picture myself and go, I'm going to look, I'm not going to look good in any of those dresses. It's so strange. It, it's a strange thing for the fellas to, to think of ourselves as a bride. So let me help you. Uh, certainly that was the strongest picture of covenant uh, in, the Jewish, in the Jewish culture. But this has nothing to do with romance. It's the word eros, which you can figure out the word we get from that. But eros love is not what's being talked about. This is talking about agape love, and it has nothing to do with sex or romance. So, and I know some of you are going, well, I knew that, but there's a guy in here that just went, oh, thank God. <laughs> so for you, praise the Lord, you're welcome. Uh, but to get that off the table, what, what that marriage is, though, it's when the culmination of a covenant, Jesus died, cut blood, there's a blood covenant, we come into relationship with God through Jesus, and covenant means an unchangeable agreement made in the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, so here's the deal. The marriage, will, that, that event will be finally what I call the gap, the gap will be over with. And here's what the gap is. Right now, I believe by faith, Jesus loves me. How many of you would say yes and amen? You know, you've been in church, you know, amen, you're supposed to say that. Uh, here's the issue. I don't experience it often. I don't feel it. There's a bunch of days I'm in here praying, and you think, Pastor Randy, you've been at this a long time, and you still pray this way? I, I actually pray this more than you would be comfortable with. God, are we good? I mean, are you here? I mean, are you busy in Africa with Reinhard Bonnke winning a bunch of people? Where are you? Because God has called us to live by faith. And many times he says this, you stay faithful and endure to the end. Why would he say so many times, those who endure to the end, they'll be saved? Because this faith walk is a walk of believing something that you don't get to see with your eyes and you don't get to feel it. And you're, listen, you're going to have your days where you go, man, I'm not even sure I believe this. That, uh, God, where are you? God, I was believing you for this thing or that. Listen, your pastor has a whole lot of Jeremiah in me. I love Jeremiah. Jeremiah, from the first to the end of his book, complained. Where, you know what I'm saying? Where the heck are you? I, why is this going? How long, oh Lord? How long? How long is this going to take? I thought it was going to be there. You said Tuesday. I came Tuesday. You weren't there on Tuesday. Where are you? Will you be to me like a like a, a, a mirage? Jeremiah 15 there. I prayed. I showed up when I thought I was supposed to show up. And you weren't there. Disappointment after disappointment. When you walk this walk of faith, you will be disappointed in God. You will not hear many preachers tell you what I just said. I'm just shooting straight with you. Because you can't have a relationship where you have faith in somebody and you believe that something is supposed to happen when it doesn't happen. What, I mean, if you're real, you, you got to say, God, what, what happened? Where were you? I thought you were going to come through for me on that thing. And here I am still alone. What? I call that the gap. Because right now we're having to walk this out without getting to experience it. We, we get brushes with it. We get brushes with experience. And I know somebody's going to send me an email and say, I have felt loved since the day I gave my life to Christ. Man, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. But that's all right. I, man, I hope it's true. I sincerely hope that that's true. It's been a struggle for me since, since the day I got saved. Lord, I want to feel it. Here's what I'm saying. Whatever the gap is for you and you have them, no longer will we be straining our faith to go, man, I'm not feeling it, but I believe. Finally, 
The reason that there will be a sound like roaring waters, like Niagara Falls following a billion times louder, like jet engines. There will be millions of people celebrating the culmination of what it is we've stood by faith. And you'll look back and see your pastor like this going, thank God it's over. (laughs) Gee whiz. I mean, standing in faith takes it out of you. If somebody's wanting to know what does faith look like, work. Ah, There's days when you go, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and all that works. There's days when it's like, doggone it, where the heck are you? This is, this is real life. The beauty of the marriage, it means that the covenant that you're standing for, the one Jesus made for us on the cross, it's real, gang. It's waiting on us. The culmination, you get to experience it fully, and here's the deal. Your faith fight ends. That's why when we see him, if you will, as our counterpart, as our husband in this metaphor, the one who provides, protects, leads, guides, and we are the recipients of all he's provided. That'll all come together, and once and for all, thank you, Jesus. So when we see him enter that banquet hall, millions will roar. Yes, yes, thank God. I look forward to that day, the bridal perspective. That was my first point, if you want to know what that is. Second point, and looking at this, so the first thing is the Holy Spirit and the bride say, come. The second point is the Holy Spirit and the church make the invitations. Again, Spirit and the bride say, come. Spirit and the bride say, come, Lord Jesus. There's a lot of that going on right now, and that's okay. Here's the beauty of of considering and, and, and looking at the second coming of Christ. It creates a pressure that lets us know we're dependent on him. This thing has a clock on it. There is a point where the, where the referee calls and says, game over, and the scoreboard gets checked, and it is what it is. That's not necessarily a, a bad pressure to, to live with. That, that helps some of us to know. I mean, if you were just going to school and nobody ever checked your grade, what's the point? Or if you were playing football and it didn't matter who won, like YMCA, the Lord bless the YMCA. I shouldn't have said that. I'll just say this isn't YMCA Christianity. You know what I'm saying? You know, this thing. I, I, co- I used to coach basketball all the time, and I only knew one way to coach. That is, kill them. I mean, <laughs> in love, but win. <laughs> and uh, we had a little church thing going on, and they said, hey, hey, would you come over and coach one of these, uh, these YMCA basketball teams? Oh, I said, heck yeah. And uh, so I show up. I miss the meeting. Had another coach he was at all the meetings. I was just there to make the thing happen. And uh, so, man, we're, we're showing up for games, and I'm, I'm staying awake the night before, pacing, going, thinking of defense. Who's my starters? I don't know how long am I going to keep my starters in? And we started trouncing kids. I mean, just, just trouncing kids. And I'd look over, and these sweet guys be going, hey, how are you doing? And all this, and hey, aren't you sweet little kids? And, man, I had my kids. We worked every night. <laughs> Man, and I laid awake at night. We full court pressed when we were 20 points up. No, you press them. Don't let them get the ball. Yo, we can get them down, break their neck. That's how we do this. Thing. <laughs> and we were like eight or 10 games in when the other coach said, Randy, you got to dial it back, man. I said, what are you talking about? We're killing it. I said, this is the YMCA. You're not supposed to be doing it. You're making the other people mad. I was like, well, nobody told me. Listen, when, when you sign up for, for, for walking with Christ, you need to know this is win or lose. This is death, life or death. Now, the good news is we're, we're going to win this thing. We're going to win this thing. Praise God. I don't even know why I told you that. All right. I feel like playing some ball now. Spirit and the bride, they say, come. Third point, this. The thirsty are invited. And this is really what I want to camp out on thirsty. The Spirit and the bride say, come, let everyone who thirst, everybody say thirst. This word really captured me, by the way. I mean, this, this is not the sermon I had prepared for y'all, by the way. This word actually changed everything for me because I was running on the track yesterday with Stacey. We were running. Just got to thinking about this word, thirst. 
Do you know your body is about 70% water? You're made of water. And God has built into us a trigger to let us know you need water. And it's called thirst. Imagine if you didn't have thirst. My mother is 85. She doesn't always have thirst. And so she's been to the hospital several times with UTIs and dehydration and those kinds of things because she forgets to drink. It's a beautiful thing God's put in our body to let you know you need water. Now, if you're drinking a bunch of Cokes and a bunch of orange juice and, uh, you know, I'm not going to say shame on you, but I will tell you, your body at some point is going to say, stop, you need water. You need water. Why is that? Because you need, you crave what you're made of. That's what thirst is. You crave what you're made of, and God gave us that. Here's the thing. You can go without food a long time, but you can't go without water for about three days, and you die. You have to have it. Well, what does that have to do with this? This thirst that God's put in us physically, he's also put it in every single human spiritually, And that thing that you call loneliness or depression or nobody gets me, nobody understands me, all of that stuff, it's the loneliness of a soul. And there are times when that, I believe it's by the Spirit, the same Spirit that provides the water also provides the thirst so that we will go, God, I'm a mess. I need you. And over, over time and over these last two years, I have had a dissatisfaction. Y'all have heard it. Y'all have heard some of it in, in the preaching. You know, I look at church and go, does any of this matter? I mean, is this doing it? It just feels, and I love our church. By the way, don't you, some of you are going, you don't like your own church. I mean, I know I love our church. Um, just church in general. Just church in general. I go to every other church. They all, we all do 22 minutes of worship. That's what the conference said, do 22 minutes and your church will grow. And this many minutes of this and this many minutes and you got to get them out in 70 minutes and you got to make them feel good and you can't challenge them too hard and blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking, God, is this what you had in mind? This feels so subpar to what's going on out here. And I don't know if I want to be, I don't know if I'm in. I just can't. And it's a, and for a little while, I was just critical and cynical. But here's what I begin to land on. This is how the Holy Spirit works. It's thirst. It's something on the inside that's saying, God, I'm, I am so dissatisfied. My soul is so thirsty. And it's not dissatisfied. Here's the thing. There's, there's lonely in my soul that my wife can't get to. I've got a loneliness in my soul, gang. I can't. It is hard to describe, and I know I'm going to get all kinds of sweet emails. Thank you. That's not it. <laughs> I just love you so much, best. I know. Thank you. It's, it's untouchable by anybody, and it takes a little while to get to the point to go, wait a minute, God. This thirst is driving me. It's driving me because I'm up here way earlier. The last two years, I've prayed more because I'm on a hunt. I need water. I need, I'm thirsty. The scripture just said that. Isaiah 55 says this thing. Everybody who's thirst, come and drink. Well, I've just now figured out what's going on. It's not lonely. It's not depressed. It's spirit thirst because of the season that we're in. The, the Holy Spirit is saying, come, come. He's putting in thirst. I'm speaking, and there's some people out here that are going, I get that. I totally get that. I love church, good church. Uh, It's got to be something deeper and more to this thing, and it is. Listen, I want to stoke that, and I want to say these Wednesday nights, and I keep pointing over there because that's where I pray, but this Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're we're coming to the water, and I'm not predefining how it's going to go. I mean, I grew up, you know, charismatic, so uh, I was a terrible charismatic. So when we said revival... Revival meant you come up, you get prayed for, you're supposed to fall down. I never fell down. You're supposed to dance. I'm a terrible dancer. I'm a terrible charismatic. Uh, Here's the thing. Whatever you've pictured in your mind revival is, just leave it all at the house. We're going to worship. You can anticipate that. We're going to pray, and we're going to wait. 
And here's the beautiful thing. You know, at Pentecost, there were signs. Here's the beautiful thing. The tongues of fire fell on every single person. Everybody spoke in a foreign language. And that's fantastic. It's, that's absolutely. And I've been, again, I've been raised in Pentecostal circles. Some of you haven't. But I'm used to manifestations. And they're, they're great, but they only mean what they mean. What I mean by that is, it's the power that came out of Pentecost. It's, it's what was in those guys and ladies when they left the room because Jesus said, I'm going to make you witnesses. And you can't do it without the power of the Holy Spirit because you don't know what you're up against. And it's wonderful that you speak in tongues and catch on fire and levitate and all that great stuff, walk on water. Hallelujah. And I'm for I'm good with it. Again, I was raised in all that. But it, I have also been in it long enough to know it only means what it means, what we're hunting for. And, yet, and please don't, don't come up here and say, is he against all that? No, let it fly. Catch on fire. Do what you got to do. I'm looking for the fire that causes us to do what we otherwise cannot be for the, for the hurting and lost world out there because that's what he said would happen. You're going to be my witnesses. The manifestations are fantastic, but that's not what we live for. We need that power to touch people that need us to have that power. You're tracking with me. So we come to these meetings with that. We come thirsty. Uh, we come thirsty. Thirst. Jesus came and he met with a woman at the well. Um, I'll, I'll dial this in pretty quick now. And uh, he talked a whole lot about thirst. This is John chapter 4. Uh, this is a, a Samaritan woman, uh, a, 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 I was about to say a throwaway. In her culture's eyes, a throwaway. She was that woman. Uh, she had been with five men, actually married to five men, have no idea how many men she had been with. She knew her way around men and the guy she was with, she was just living with him. Here's the deal. Of all people Jesus could come to, uh, one is Samaritan, which means served God or worshiped God, the same father of Jesus, but worshiped a bunch of other gods. Right? So everybody listening to me right now, in, in the church of Jesus Christ in America, there's a bunch of us Samaritans. Oh, we worship God. We know how to do church. Yeah. Oh, but then we got our other stuff. We got our sports and our stuff. Not, not the cowboys. The cowboys are okay. But we got our <laughs> sports, these other things. Cowboys are a cursed team, though. It just So he comes to this Samaritan woman, and uh, all of a sudden they start talking about water, thirst. And here's, in essence, what he says to her baby girl. Look, you've got a thirst, and that's a God-given thing because that's a spirit thirst, and you need to drink what you're of, and you keep trying to get it out of men. You're on swinging, single, mingle, or whatever, trying to find the guy, and you've gone guy to guy to guy, you're on number six now, maybe this is not going to work this way. What you're needing, you're needing me. You're needing, uh, you're needing the spirit. Again, gang, you understand you're made of, you're made of spirit. Uh, I can't remember what I've told, said in the first service and the second service. Uh, at creation, at creation, God created the dirt. And then he spoke to the dirt and said, let the trees and the fruit trees and all that spring forth. And boom, 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 they did. Then he spoke to, and, and, and separated the water from the dirt and spoke to the water and said, now let the waters team with fish and boom, 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 Nemo, everything like that. But then he came to create us. And he said, did he, did he speak to the dirt to make man? Did he speak to the water? To make man understand the tree it comes from the dirt it's sustained by the dirt and when the tree dies it goes back to the to the dirt the fish is born in the water it's sustained by water has to have that atmosphere and when that fish dies it goes back into the water whatever he spoke to whatever it came from that was sustained by what he spoke to what did he speak to to make us let us he spoke to himself let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And he formed this body that'll go back to dirt. But our spirit came from him. We are of God, little children. It has not yet appeared what we will be, but we know this. When we see him, we will be like him. That's what we've come from. So when Jesus is speaking to this precious woman, he's saying, you need to drink 
what you're made of, and you're made of spirit. And you need to be born again of the water. That's that correlation. Are you tracking with me? Talks about thirst and says, girl, you need to be saved. And in just a minute, I'm going to give everybody an invitation to this wedding. And you got to have the robes on. But it starts with being born again of your spirit because we need to drink from what we're made of. Thirst, number one, calls us to God for salvation. As he continues on with her, point number two, thirst calls us to worship. Thirst is what calls us to worship. Somehow Jesus is having a conversation. They're talking about water, talking about her getting saved, and then all of a sudden they start talking about worship. You worship over here. I worship over here, she says. We worship at that church. We're Baptists. You're over here. You're the Pentecostals. Y'all speak in tongues. We don't. What's wrong with us? Jesus said, it don't matter. Doesn't matter what location. Doesn't matter what your little culture is. What matters is that you worship in spirit and in truth. It it, it went from thirst about water, thirst about her soul, and now how do you get from thirst to worship? And I'll tell you how. Again, because the spirit and the church are walking in sync. The spirit of God is in here trying to get us in sync with him. If you'll listen to the worship songs that are coming out right now, I mean, anybody, I'm a musician, I can sit down and write you a worship song. And it'll be creative and blah, blah, blah. But I'll tell you, the one that moves you, and when you hear our team sing, the reason that you're moved, you're like, oh, I just love that song. No, because they're singing thirst. They're singing their thirst. I've got a thirst, God. I'm craving something from you. I need something from you. And when you begin to listen to the songs of an era and listen to the prophetic, the the Maverick City folk, our team, uh, the Hill songs, the, the Bethel folk, I'm, who's Fertix group? Anyway, Elevation, Elevation thank you. Uh, all, all these different pockets, they, 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 they write, and some of them are just written songs, hallelujah, but some of them move us because they're in sync with what the Spirit is because there's, somebody wrote our hunger. Uh, the little girl that wrote uh, 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 Defender. Man, every time I heard, first time I heard the bridge to Defender, uh, when I thought I lost me, you knew where I left me. You reintroduced me to your love and you picked up all my pieces and put me back together. You are the defender of my heart and all I do is praise. How do you write a song like that except for you're in a place where you are so thirsty? God, I thought I'd lost me. I thought I'd never get put back together. And you found me. Man, I'm telling you, when you guys come and you sing out of your thirst, man, now we're getting into something beyond just good songs. We're starting to reach and make contact because the Holy Spirit's the one creating that thirst. He knows what's broken. He knows where you're thirsty. He knows how to put salt. Salt will make you thirsty in your life to make you thirsty. That's where great worship comes from. We're going to sing one of those as we conclude today. And thirst is what calls us to the harvest. The guys come up while he's talking to this woman about water, about her salvation, and about worship. And they ask about food. And he says, I don't need any food. And then he tells them, guys, look up. Look up. The fields are white for harvest. I need laborers in the field. Pray that God would send laborers to the field. And this is where I come to where Jesus has come to us today to say, look, there's a great wedding coming. And I need you to get in sync with me and call to the lost. If we're doing it right, the Holy Spirit and the bride will be saying with power, come, come. We'll be speaking the language of the thirst that God has in every single person and they'll respond now, when I, again, 70s, 80s, 90s, I was growing up, when we said the word harvest, we, everybody knew we were talking either about Billy Graham or Reinhard Bonnke, or, and, and we used to watch when there was only three channels, and that'll tell you how old I am. <laughs> At three channels, Billy Graham's crusades would be prime time. Yeah. They'd get the 7 o'clock slot, and it'd be a stadium filled with people, and he would preach one of his seven messages, 
and you'd want to get saved again. He's like, you know, be, anyway. Uh, people would come out of the stands by the thousands to the same song, just as I am without one plea. Oh, no, 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 was shed for me every single time and by the thousands. And it would excite church. And we would talk about harvest. We were always talking about, man, thousands of people, Reinhard Bonnke, a million in a meeting, a million in a meeting in Africa, over 70 million people saved. And we hear a man like that talk, and man, it just makes you want to go, Lord, I'm going to run through that wall. Use me. And we spoke about harvest, and it's because the Holy Spirit loves and wants to get them saved, and he wants us in sync with him to call on the harvest. And today, I mean, think about it. When's, when's the last time you actually heard about 100,000 getting saved? When, when we say harvest now, usually what we're talking about is money. There's a context for it. It's fine. You, you gave your tithe and you gave a little extra offering, so there's a harvest coming. Well, praise God. Uh, that's a context. I believe one of the reasons we need these, these three nights, and I'd like our worship team. Guys, y'all go ahead and come on back. We need the Holy Spirit. I, I, I'm going to say something that's going to make you uncomfortable, if I hadn't already. <laughs> I want to see lost people saved. I really do. But I'm way too comfortable if they don't. We can go along with great church. Now, I'm not saying that like God's mad. I'm saying it like, I need the Holy Spirit. I'm thirsty for thirst. When I see his last admonition to us, he said, get in sync with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the bride are saying to Jesus, Jesus, would you come and meet with us? And the Spirit and the bride are saying to everyone who thirsts, everyone, come. And a couple of the admonitions in Revelations 2 and 3 to the church at Laodicea, Jesus comes. And, there's, and they said this, we don't need you. Jesus, we're good. We're good. Man, we are rocking. Our church is rocking. The services are perfect. It's actually 70 minutes. And get them out, and the church is just growing, and we don't need you. I, I don't think we're there. I do think it's the tendency of, I think it is a leaning of the church to get so satisfied with the way we do church that we forget the point of it all, which is a harvest. I'm asking God in our church to refire thirst for lost people. I'm not right. I don't care like I should care. I need help. Here's the beautiful thing. The Holy Spirit can come and do that. Why don't you guys stand to your feet? This season right now is just a time of getting before God. Got really, really great news though for you. Us, the church, and the Holy Spirit are going to get in perfect sync so that we're saying the exact same thing. Come Lord Jesus, come lost, and come all who are thirsty. And we're gonna drink. I mean, we're gonna actually be changed by encountering the living God. Now that's going to happen. This, this getting ready. Now, here's my belief. If we'll get ready for the marriage supper, we'll be getting ready for the counsel of the marriage coordinator, if you will, who is the Holy Spirit. John writes more about this, and he says, and I heard, as it were, the voices of a great multitude, millions and millions, like the sound of many waters, as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Just picture for a moment when we get there and side by side with millions, the relief on one hand and the excitement for the things that we've believed and seen in our imagination, they'll be more grand and more awesome. But the main thing is we'll get to experience his love, experience the things that we've stood for by faith. We'll actually experience it in this great, wedding day, and by the millions saying, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory 
For finally, the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife, the church, has made herself ready. And to her it was granted, the church, to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, and the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are all of those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed. The invitation goes out to every single person. Every person is invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Matthew 22, Jesus gave a parable. King invited people to his son's wedding. The people he invited said, eh, no. The fact that you're invited doesn't mean that you say yes, but you're invited. Then there was a guy that came to the wedding. Here's the deal. Finally, Jesus, uh, the king said, look, if those people don't want to come, then fine, go burn down their cities. Then he said, go to any and everybody. You go look under the bridge. You go to the woman at the well, uh, the gays, the straights, the trans. You go to all of them. You go to all of them. And you let them know you're invited. You come. One thing. The king will provide a garment. You're going to have to be clothed, as we read earlier in the scripture. Blessed are those whose robes are washed in the blood of Jesus. You're going to have to take the king's garment, which is accepting Jesus as Savior. That's how you put on the right clothes. That parable goes on in Matthew 22 to say, the king comes out to this ragtag group. All of them are wearing the clothes he provided, but one guy just showed up to it. It's fine. Good like I am. I don't need your help. I don't need your charity. I'm good. I'm good enough to be at this banquet. Says the king made his way all the way to his table and said, friend, what are you doing here without the wedding clothes? And then the king said, bind him hand and foot and throw him out into outer darkness, which is just a picture of hell. This is harsh. But the beauty is it lets us know up front everybody's invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's one door in and you have to wear the robe. You got to receive Jesus. If you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your Savior, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And the truth is you're way ahead of me because the Holy Spirit's already dealing with your heart. That thirst has already been touched and you're already saying, man, would you shut up and get me saved? That's a good sign. So I'm going to lead us all in that prayer, and then we're going to worship, and then we're going to be done. Would you all bow your heads? Everyone praying with me, Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner, and I've sinned against you, and I'm fully responsible. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He lived for me, and he bled for me, and he died for me so that I could be saved, so that I could be forgiven, so that I could be accepted. I believe you raised him from the dead, and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I receive a robe of righteousness. I'm all yours. Do anything you want with me. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Lord, right, right now, there are men and women who have just accepted the clothing that you've provided. They are now, they are now absolute guaranteed candidates, guaranteed to be at this marriage supper of the Lamb. And Lord, we all stand right now to say to you, God, what a great honor. What an honor to be invited by the King, oh God, to the marriage of the Lamb to come and to worship you, Lord. We are so grateful, and we honor you, and we worship you, and we glorify you right now. What an honor to be invited to the marriage of the Lamb, to come and worship
the two becoming one all the prophecies fulfill in a moment so
we get to get ready. We get to get ready. I didn't do this first service, but I just want to encourage you, Crossing Church, what that means to get ready. I was 18 years old, and I had one of these thirst moments, like Pastor Randy was talking about, that we've all experienced before. I was a missionary in Cuba. I had just come to know the Lord, and all the worship was in Spanish. Right? Don't let this brown fool you. I don't know any Spanish at all. So it was really, really rough for me to be there because I loved to worship. I loved it. And I struggled. I was there for a couple of weeks. I would get up about 5 in the morning. And I would go to the edge of this cliff where these waves were hidden, and I would worship on my own. And I finally said, Lord, I've had enough. You need to do something. I'm thirsty. I want to worship you. I want to worship you with my brothers and sisters, but I can't do it. I don't know the language. And in an instant, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord allowed me to hear the tongue of these waves. And instantly I was undone in this puddle of glory. And every wave that hit this cliff was saying, praise him. Praise his holy name. Praise Jesus. And I thought I was going to die in that moment from how overwhelming the sound was. And I remember closing my eyes and hearing this whisper. He said, son, all of creation worships me, but I've given you the privilege to choose to do it. So this week, I want to encourage you as we get ready for revival nights, you get to get ready. Let that thirst birth worship in you today, Crossing Church. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're so glad you're here. A couple of announcements before we dismiss. First and foremost, if you accepted that invitation today and made Jesus your Savior, we just want to welcome you to the Bride of Christ. We would also ask that you fill out in the backseat pocket in front of you, there's a, po- there's a Connect card that says, I said yes. Fill that out with information, and you can turn that in at the Connect desk on your way out. Well, we have a gift waiting just for you, all right? If it's your first time here, or you've been here for a little while, I would also ask that you fill out your information on that Connect card so that we can help partner with you and walk with you through life, right? And lastly, guys, Life Group launch is coming up soon. Some of you guys, your next step is to join a Life Group, and I'm sure some of you have been stirred to even start a Life Group. So I want to encourage you. I promise you, I promise you, it will bless you to lead a Life Group this season, all right? That's all I have for you this morning. I'm going to pray over you guys as our last act of worship. We want to bless your tithe and offerings. So, Father, we just thank you so much this morning that you are our perfect groom, Father. That you protect us, you provide for us, and, Lord, there is safety in your midst. This morning, Lord Jesus, I pray as our last act of worship that we would give our tithe and offerings to you and that you would remember your promise, that you would pour out blessing that we cannot contain, Father, and that you personally rebuke the devourer of our finances and of our resources. Right now, I bless the families, the marriages right now that are coming together, that are building an altar of praise in this moment as they give to you. We love you. We thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Guys, don't forget this week, Revival Nights, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Y'all have a good day.